hell is up with all these E3 replacement videos being so damn cringy? Like, seriously, why? Uh, I watched the PC Gamer Show, one of the first of the replacement videos for E3. It was originally going to be you know, a streamed thing anyway, because of, you know, it was going to be at E3, it was going to be a streamed thing anyway. But, or was it going to be a live thing? Well, they did it live one time, and then they, they streamed it another year. It, it depends. It, it, it's hard to say. But, um, because E3 was canceled, uh, all the major events that were going to take place were being replaced by live streams. And I watched the PC Gamer thing. And A had this whole skit with this weird-looking robot and it was just just a cringe fest. I was gonna cover it for Gamers Bay, actually, but it's like I I got through it. I watched it, and it was cringy from beginning to end. It was a cringe fest, and I I grew up watching uh, reruns of 1960s Batman, so I know cringe when I see it. I know campy cringe when I see it. And this was this was campy. Not quite in that level. That is like epic levels of campiness. Campy cringe. But this was close. This was close. And then and then EA had their uh, had their video and god that was awful. That thing was awful too. Like why are they so terrible? I, I know that they had to, you know, do these last minute because E3 was canceled, but they had plenty of time. They had a few months time to actually do these things. And why are they just so awful? So terrible. I'm sure that Sony, even in Sony in their event, would have had more games to show. I mean, if they did their E3 thing, they would have had, like, a, a lot of interesting stuff to show, but their thing was just awful, too. Pretty cringy, too. I mean, there was some interesting stuff in there, some interesting games, but they mostly focused on... It. I'm not even, even going to go into, you know, that they didn't focus on AAA games or anything, or mostly on indie games. A lot of the indie games looked interesting. A lot of them did. I'm not going to harp on them focusing on that. It's just the whole presentation of the whole video itself was bad. I mean, what is up with all this? And so, um... Uh, Xbox is going to be having their video in July, which is coming up uh, pretty soon. We'll see what happens there. See if Microsoft can avoid the cringe. And boy, they've got some explaining to do with Mixer. Oh boy, do they have some explaining to do. Anyway, to uh, in addition to just why is this stuff so cringy I also watched the first um, cyberpunk 2077 um, night city wire and I'm liking what I'm seeing this looks pretty impressive they've got some interesting stuff they uh, they are definitely following the cyberpunk lore I, I used to play cyberpunk in college so I I know I'm not an expert in cyberpunk, but I know quite a bit about it, and they're definitely drawing a lot from the lore, plus they have Senpai Pondsmith to, uh, to help them out, as I, I liked that part. I liked that part. But, uh, yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 is looking really, really good. I really want to play that game, and I am really disappointed that it has been delayed again but I understand that um, they want to get this right 
I would rather a game be delayed than get a piece of crap. So, yeah, I would rather it be delayed than get a piece of crap. There are people saying, oh, they're delaying it so they can make it ready for PS5. So, you're going to get a better game out of it. I mean, they're going to take that time not only to, you know, beef it up for the PS5, maybe add some ray tracing support to it, but they'll go through and make sure that they've gotten all the bugs worked out and maybe tweak some features. You're going to end up getting a better game. You see, see, this is the thing. People scream and cry about games being delayed like it's a bad thing. No, you want a game delayed. Why? Because you want it to get better. You want them to work on it more. You want them to look at their features, look at their content and say, hey, this could be better. This could be fixed here. So they can fix bugs that would otherwise not be there, that would otherwise be there when the game launches. That way you don't have to have a day one patch. That's the whole reason why you have day one patches because they rush to release the game oh realize oh we've got all these bugs we need to get rid of these bugs and then they release a patch on launch day when you want to play the game and you have to sit there and you have to wait for it to update after you downloaded and installed the game on your console um, on Steam, we would get, when we download the game, we would get the updated version on Steam. But on console, you download it, and then, you, then when you go to play it, you have to wait for the update to download. Uh, you want a game delayed. A delayed game is a game that will turn out better. That word, they will fix the problems. Even Shingro Miyoto. Uh, said that he would rather have uh, a game delayed than not. And uh, also what I learned from the same uh, stream was CD Projekt Red is working with Studio Trigger to do a cyberpunk anime. And I looked at the the, the cover of this and it, and it looks like it's very much inspired by Akira, the, the, um, the poster, or it's going to be on Netflix. Uh, some people aren't going to be happy about that. Uh, here in the U.S. we get access to Netflix. It's, um, it's a little different in other countries. So uh, it might be an issue for other people, but here in the U.S. we'll have it. It will be released in 2022, so we have to wait a couple of years for it, which is, which is of course, you know, reasonable because they're just now uh, starting work on it. And animation work takes a while. Animation work takes a while, even though they, even though most animation work today is digital, they they do some initial work hand drawn, and then the rest of it's all done digitally most of the time. It does take a it does take a while to um, to produce anything reasonable. Plus, Netflix doesn't release episodes by doesn't release shows by an episode by episode basis like Disney Plus does. Disney Plus will release one episode a week of a series, whereas Netflix releases the entire thing all at once so that you can binge it. You can binge watch it. So it's going to take longer for the entire series to get done before it's released. So it, I, I don't know any more details on it other than that. We just know that it's been announced. We don't know who's going to be the voice actors in this, what the characters are going to be. Is it going to be related to the game in any way? Or is it going to be you know, um, an original story? There's, there's any number of things they could do because uh, Cyberpunk 27, Cyberpunk uh, 2022, I think that's the original name of the game. It's been a long time since I played Cyberpunk. Uh, there's so much story that could be told there in it. So, hey, I, 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 I'm 
I am really stoked for this. Plus, it's Studio Trigger that's doing it. The Studio Trigger has done some good work. You know, they're the studio behind Kill a Kill and Darling in the Franks, whether you like that series or not, and Little Witch Academia. They're behind that, and that's good quality animation. So they they have a pedigree. And these are, these are people who, who originally worked on, you know, this was a studio that was started by people who originally worked on Gurren Lagann. So, you know, these people have a great pedigree in anime. And so I am really looking forward to this. Really looking forward to it. I mean, I'm stoked for this. Although we have to wait till 2022 to watch this thing. And finally, I watched the streams for Baldur's Gate 3. I want that game. Now. Where is it? Uh, it's going to be in, um, it's going to be in early access on Steam. And, um, I want it now. Um, they've definitely, Lorian Studios has definitely, uh, taken some ideas from probably one of the best RPGs to come out in a very long time, Divinity Original Sin 2. They've taken some ideas from that and uh, brought it into the game and I, I just I, I I want it now um, that is I, I, I played the original Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 I never finished them I may go back and do that because I, I do have the enhanced editions for modern PCs I may go back and, and do those maybe even stream them before this comes out I don't know. I, I, I might do something on them, but um, they were, they were, and still are some of the best D and D RPG games, non online RPG games that have ever been made. They are great. I hope, I hope Larian gets the rights to Icewind Dale also, because if they can do this for Icewind Dale, do an Icewind Dale three. That would be awesome. And also Planescape Torment. Do a remake of Planescape Torment in this style. Make this happen. Please. Uh, Wizards of the Coast. Um, let them do it. Please. Please let them do it. Because this game looks like it's going to be... Is this look, this, Baldur's Gate 3... Looks like it's going to definitely be game of the year when it's when it's released in full. You know, after early access, it's going to definitely be an end, be a game of the year contender. I'm telling you right now, this this looks that impressive. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Yo! Hey, you can reach me on Twitter, MeWe, Discord, Steam, and now Facebook. Yes, I know, Facebook. So I'll be streaming on Facebook also, as well as Twitch and YouTube. So that you can reach me here, and check out my other channels, and I'll see you next time.